oh wow, I'm in here before everyone else. And now it's the Deb Beer Republic. Welcome in, everybody, to the Craft Beer Republic. I am Greg. Thanks for drinking. Thanks for joining. I am being joined by the Flex 350 Dooley himself. What's up, Flex Tough? Come on, man. The, the lats aren't that wide. <laughs> <laughs> not a Dooley? Just a single? They're wide, but they're not that Some wide. Fucking tree trunks over there. Daddy. <laughs> and coming in as the... Oh, God, is there a Ford car that starts with a D? I need some alliteration here for Deb's name. Not that I can think of. We'll just call her the Fiesta. Oh, that's cool. It's a party in a car. <laughs> in a shitty car. You've been the shittiest fucking car Ford ever made other than the Pinto. I was going to say, there's still a Pinto. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm an explorer a at a minimum. All right. Expedition. How about yeah, that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. This is my fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> easy, not my easy. <laughs> fat yeah. ass minus 30 pounds. Come on. Right? Aw, thanks. Skinniest one in the room is like, my fat ass over here. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Uh, welcome in, everybody. By the way, for those who are like, why are they always making Ford references when Deb's on what the show? It's because she thinks the intro... Yeah, it sounds like a Ford commercial. So. I implore the listeners of Craft Beer Republic, <laughs> when they're done, to go to YouTube <laughs> and watch a couple of Ford commercials. Specifically the trucks. And then it, all, only for a truck. And then go back and listen to the intro to this show again and tell me what the fuck you think. Let's get it on the grams and let's talk about it. I always think of Chevy and like, you know, built professional grade. See, I always <laughs> think like a rock. <laughs> like, I always think like a rock. Yeah, like well, the new, rock. The new ones with Will Arnett are, uh, you know, built professional grade. Show. Whoa, like a rock. Sorry, I... <laughs> it kind of makes it seem Not like they sorry. weren't they weren't professionally built before. Right. <laughs> like they were like just slapped together. And Up someone's... until about twelve years ago, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all of a sudden we started putting standards into our car. It's weird how this works. So, anyways, uh, welcome in everybody. Uh, follow us all on the socials: Craft Beer Republic, Flex Me Beer underscores in between, and One Hop H O P Mess for now, at least until she gets rid of the gram. So we'll see. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. <laughs> There's been discussions. <laughs> By the time this drops, it'll be no longer. <laughs> uh, no, go get her. And uh, Untapped, Untapped, Jesus, Tavor, not Untapped. Fuck you, Untapped. Tavor, <laughs> you're shopping on Tavor. <laughs> Promo code untapped. No, it's not really untapped. It's it's the idiot it's users. It's the people of untapped. Of, come yes. on. It's the scum. Let's give them, the let's scum who uses Give them a little untapped. bit of credit. The idea to come up with a social media platform where you rate beers was genius. The problem is true. Letting all the idiots people. on it who right. diss good beers. Right. And and don't know a goddamn thing about loggers. Yeah, yeah. Just which is shot. I mean, loggers are great. I've bought more loggers right. this year than I've bought in past years. I'm just like, wow, these are fucking phenomenal. You should. Yeah, I yeah. live for crispy boys. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, interim Brian's nickname in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. Crispy boy. Sorry. <laughs> we'll move on to what we're drinking. <laughs> now that we've thoroughly <laughs> creeped everyone out. Flex is <laughs> voguing over there. I saw this beer. I, You know, I almost never grocery store beer purchase anymore. I always try to keep it local or, or Tavor or something like that. So it gets more, more money at the brewery. But at the store, I saw this one. I was like, I haven't had this in a very hot minute. So I picked up Deschutes Brewery Mirror Pond Pale Ale. It's a classic. 5%, 40 IBUs. Has a 3.6 and untapped because people don't know good beer when it slaps them in the face and of 87 on Beer Advocate. From the brewery, they say the quintessential Northwest Pale Ale. Cascade hops and more Cascade hops. Give this tawny colored ale delicious hop forward aroma and flavor. Pale malt allows the hops to linger, not overpower. And look here, as it starts to warm up, need some fucking pale ales in my life. This beer is... Still fucking slaps. Mm -hmm. uh, all these years, it is still just as good as the first time I had it. Yeah, it's uh, it's crisp. 
It's got a little coppery color to it, like the old school pails and IPAs. A little hot bite, a little bitterness on the finish, but nothing too crazy. Just an all day, you know, pool beer type of situation. And all the people are giving it fucking three and a half. Would you say it's the intern Brian of beers? It's as good as the first day you had. (laughs) And it still slaps. Absolutely. And yes, it still slaps at the appropriate times. (laughs) Only one consent is given. (laughs) Safe words, Oklahoma. Pumpernickel. (laughs) Pineapple. Uh, Shout out to Deschutes. Still coming in with the heaters on this one. All right. What is that noise? It's fucking Brian is cracking open a beer in studio with the bottle opener on his fucking keychain, and all his keys are jangling around like we're not trying to fucking record a show right now. The fucking janitor's over here. He could have just motioned to me for a bottle opener. You know, I've been I've been thinking about that lately. (laughs) People who who still have key rings and they hang their keys on their pants. How many (laughs) keys do you actually need nowadays? How many storage lockers do you have? <laughs> How many no, doors no, no. do you have? You, to need, open? you need one for your car, right? One for your car, one for your house, one for your work, and then the like fifteen keys that are still on the keyring because you don't know what the fuck they yeah. do, and you just but don't you can't get rid, get rid of them because you've had them for like later. sixteen years. Right. I've gotten rid of all it's my keys. Crazy. I have my, my car fob and a, a fob thing for one of the work locations, and that's it. That's I do all the I same. I, I keep my car fob in my pocket, and that is it. Yeah, my house, I don't need a key for. It's electronic, so I no more keys. Fuck you, keys. Aren't you fancy? Yeah. Well, now you know, Greg and technology, and he loved it. Yes, I love technology. Sorry. All right, well, speaking of pale ales, <sighs> I <laughs> have a list that will hopefully piss Flex off to some extent. The 15 best American pales of 2022, according to the idiots who write on Untapped. Let's get it. Number 15. Lizard King from Pipeworks Brewing Company. Number 14, Alpha King from Three Floyds Brewing. Super solid. Number 13, Profit Maker from Burial Beer Company. 12, First Drop from Upper Pass Beer Company. 11, Photon from Equilibrium Brewery. Is that out near you, Flex, Equilibrium? Is that uh, New York? Oh, maybe. Uh, Number 10, here we go, Flex. Moon Man. New Glarus Brewing Company. My man. Super solid brew there. <laughs> Number nine, Lustra from Dancing Gnome. Number eight, da- Double Daisy Cutter from Half Acre Brewing Company. Half Acre solid. Number seven, Tiny Treat from Treehouse Brewing. Number six, here we go, Pseudo Sue from Toppling Goliath. Solid. It's a classic. Number five, mm, Julie-ish from Treehouse Brewing. Number four, Mini Creamsicle from Treehouse Brewing. See a trend here. Number three, Taters from Other Half Brewing. Two, we were just talking about this off the air. Zombie Dust from Three Floyds Brewing. And the number one, Edward from Hill Farmstead Brewery. Heard good things about Hill Farmstead. N- N- yeah, I mean, no. Hill Farmstead has a good reputation, but uh, I've had, <laughs> as we were talking about off air, recently had Zombie Dust for the first time. Mm-hmm. It was good, but it wasn't great. Sound like a sex hotline word. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time someone said that to me. <laughs> Listening to this podcast will only cost you 99 cents a yeah. minute. <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about Disney World and all the crazy people. And I mentioned the time that I went there and got insanely sick. And like my ex-girlfriend was, was mad at me for being sick and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, <laughs> some, uh, Andy on the gram, Andy J at Mandrew Brews. Mandrew underscore brews that uh, he had something similar happen to him when he was a kid that I just got finished listening to the most recent episode. And I also have a story about getting sick at Disney. This was in 2008 when I was 14. First of all, fuck you for being 14 in 2008. Damn <laughs> children. He's I got a, a stomach man. bug while at Disney two days into our family spring ba- spring break vacation. I was throwing up and had other symptoms that spread to my mom and my sister. My dad was the lone survivor. The best part was when we were coming back, my mom, sister, and I got stuck in Cincinnati because of a snowstorm. That sounds like the worst part. My dad made it home by going through Philly. We rented a car with another guy we knew from our church, and he drove us from Cincinnati to State College. We made it home, but holy balls, was it a trip to remember? And uh, he says, my mom says the hotel buffet was to blame, and my dad thinks it was Legoland. I'd say it's a good mixture of both, but uh, 
I'd tell you, one of the sickest I ever got was in Vegas after eating some like Mexican joint. I was like 13. We're with my family. My sister and I both got it. And all six of us, four kids and two adults, all six of us are in one hotel room. And my sister and I are fucking battling for that shitter because it's just coming out <laughs> all ends. It was the war. We couldn't leave the hotel room. We couldn't even leave the bathroom. Did you ever see that movie Bridesmaid? Of course. <laughs> well, the scene where there, she's like shitting in the sink and the other one's like on the toilet and the... Was it like that? It was a lot like that. <laughs> it was it was bad. Like I, I was sitting on the toilet and then throwing up into the bathtub and it was... Oh, been there. Yeah. Jeez. Everyone listening while eating right now is like, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they should know better by now though. Shame <laughs> on them. <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh God. Ugh, so rough. All right. Before we get to... Uh, Choose voicemail. Ludicrous libation law from Illinois, not too far from Flex. It's illegal to bring 45 liters or more of alcoholic beverage into the state without a license. The fine for doing so is at least one year in prison. That's just like uh, like a bootleg, right? Is that like the old time bootleg? It's smoking the bandit shit right there. Yeah. yeah. East bound and down, loading up in trucking. Maybe that should be our <laughs> intro. There we go. Yeah. Fuck copyrights. <laughs> copyrights can suck a dick. And we're That's our new dicks. intro from now on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, shit. <laughs> and it wasn't me. <laughs> Deb came back one more week just because she didn't get enough dick talk on the last show. <laughs> and now we've introduced it and now it's over. Uh, all right. The homie Chew Your Beer has called in with another another voicemail relating to the uh, Bruise and Cruise Festival. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Oh, what's up, CBR? Guess who it is, homies? CYB. Chew your beer. Craft Beer <laughs> Republic. We had a meetup, homies. We met in person, homes. It was awesome. Uh, fuck, Flex, you fucked up, homie. You need to sell your house and, and maybe sell someone else's house <laughs> and that person's house and then your parents' house and your in-laws' house. <laughs> you can move to california and buy a house and hang out with us and drink beer with us i'm kidding don't do it man it's fucking expensive out here but uh dude we had i got to meet greg homie uh greg it was a pleasure hanging out with you it was actually a blast i'm jealous about that shirt i hope there's one in the mail coming to me i'm a 3x slim uh the <laughs> white is slim. medium uh <laughs> and uh man coley you're fucking dope homie coley was a shit Coley had a lot of energy, very talkative, very friendly, very awesome. Sounds and like uh, and Shannon, I, I'm, hopefully I'm, I got her name correct, Greg. Out of yes. this world, homie, you, you 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 scored. Keep that one, homie. Don't let that one go. Make her happy. Keep her happy, homie, because it's very hard to find a hyena that backs you up and does the same that likes to do or put up with the shit you do. Uh, like mine. And mine's not a real big beer guy, beer drinker. Uh, but she is now. But like a fest thing, she's not. She just started getting into this, so she was very timid about going. And but you know, she she fucking backs me up, homie. She surprised me with these tickets, and we were there. And you know, she she had a ball. Uh, and I heard you took my 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 buddy to fucking Naughty Pine. I'm very jealous. That should have been me. I'm kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> but homie. <laughs> Kidding? Let's no, make it not. happen. Let's see what we can do. My wife talked to you guys about Pozole. Maybe we'll make something happen, Holmes. We'll see what's up. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, just a quick little thing. I've noticed I've met a lot of podcasters. Uh, Four Brewers, uh, The Perfect Pour, you guys, um, uh, Beer Night in San Diego, Beer Talk San Diego. These are big, big, big beer podcasts. And I've noticed, like, the main, main hosts of these podcasts are more reserved, timid, kind of to themselves you know very uh shy uh and i guess that's just the way it is because you know on the podcast you guys are full of energy uh informative talkative you can't even shut you guys up but i guess that's because you're in your element you know you're doing what you love and, and, Until Flex and tells what you have shut you up. but out in the out in the wild homes uh you guys are a total different thing so uh i i, I guess that's cool i am who i am I'm a fucking full of energy at home, and I'm a full of energy outside, and sometimes my wife likes it, sometimes she thinks it's too much, <laughs> but she loves me for who I am, homie, because I'm a cool, dope motherfucker, that's what she says, <laughs> not me, and uh, I can handle my alcohol. So, 
We'll see what's up, Holmes. I, do, I know she talked to you and Coley and your girl about Pozole, so I might make that shit happen, Holmes. Might Please. have you at my house for some Pozole, and then maybe you will have like a little bottle share or something. We'll see what's up. Uh, we'll put that in the mix. Let me talk to her. Like I said, she's scared and timid, so let's see how it goes. Uh, but it was awesome, and then... Uh, Dude, it was just fucking dope, man. Flex, you fucked up, homie. You f- sell your houses. Sell everybody's houses. <laughs> over here. Uh, I don't want to rub it in too much. Had a great time, though. If I'm over in that area, I'll make sure to fucking DM you on Instagram. Uh, Coley, I think I st- we started following you, so there you go. Uh, I'm not under Chew Your Beer because it's a family thing. And uh, that's it, homie. This is Chew Your Beer. And I had a fucking blast, homie. And I got sunburned, and I got hungover that same day. And instead of pozole, I had a fucking greasy-ass double cheeseburger with onion rings and chili cheese fries and a cold-ass Coca-Cola. I like to watch it. Peace out, eh? Holmes with no L because L's are for losers. L's are for losers. And apparently I have to sell my entire neighborhood just yeah. to move to California. <laughs> You haven't heard about house prices. Yeah, out here, he ain't wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's bad. Yeah, that, that's the uh, Wisconsin to California inflation markup there. Horrible oh. algorithm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not a good algorithm for sure. Oh, uh, it was so. I, I know I talked about it in depth last week, but uh, so much fun and hanging out with Chu and, and his friends. And uh, I am so down for Pozole. Like, please. I want to go. Yeah, let's. Chu, you got to bring a big You got to bring that energy, man. Bring the energy. Don't be, don't be timid, Greg. I guess I'm timid. <laughs> I don't know. You shy I ass motherfucker. I timid. Apparently. I walked right up to him. I was like, chew. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, chew your beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> His wife's looking at me like I'm insane. Oh, that was good times. Uh, if you guys want to leave us a voicemail, 805 538 beer 2337. Give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. You can text us if you want. You know, whatever whatever your thing is, you can, you can do it just like chew. Uh, all right. What else we have going on here? We have some news to get to, but I think most importantly, we should make a call to the pen. He calls to the bullpen for beer. I haven't hit that in a while. That's what he said. Uh, this is Casa Agria's Tramping and Trailing Imperial Stout. They say it's still summer for a little bit longer, so there's still time for outdoor fires and the treats that pair perfectly. Tramping and Trailing is a s'mores-inspired stout that gets its name from the magazine that first published a recipe for some mores in the 1020s. We brewed this. I think that must be a typo. That must be 1920s. 1920s. Yeah. Uh, We brewed this stout with graham crackers in the mash, marshmallows, and honey in the kettle. And finish the beer with cocoa nibs and coffee. The roast from the malt and coffee combined with the vanilla sweetness of the marshmallows hint at the squishy center that is layered by the chocolate nibs and sandwiched by the graham and honey. Each sip echoes memories of summers by the fire with friends and family. And this bad boy is 10% and has a 414 on tap. drinks like... uh, I don't know. It's dangerous. It's mm. very dangerous. Flex, I wish you could smell this beer. Oh, the, Yo, the smell, smell is the best part of it. It's like amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Is it like roasted just, mallows? It really yeah. is. It's You get all ah. of the individual components. Like it smells like graham crackers. It smells like the marshmallow. Mm. I really pick it, up the marshmallow on the nose. A lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it It just, it smells like, I, I wish I could wear this as a, like a perfume. <laughs> Track Pe- fat dudes. Right. <laughs> I don't know. People just start taking bites out of you. Yeah. <laughs> Ow, what was that for? <laughs> Smell delicious. I feel like if you wore that as a perfume intern, Brian would quit his job because he'd just be on you all the time. All day. All the- <laughs> quit his job like he's getting paid to intern. Yeah. So how would I tip? How would I tip? <laughs> he's got to keep working. How she how could she aggressively tip? <laughs> Uh, thanks to Jack for hooking this one up. That was uh, nice of you to hand me this beer. This is a, a big boy. And, uh, you know, I don't always love things full of things. Right. But this is pretty tasty. No, this is really good. I mean, so if, if Zach do would it right, be disappointed in you. He's the adjunct uh, yeah. motherfucker. 
Well, Zach would be all about this beer because he is the adjunct motherfucker. But he'd be disappointed. still waiting for that adjunct motherfucker to drop. But too. he'd be disappointed that you don't, you know, you're not all about the adjuncts. Yeah, I'm not about the avocado in my beer like he is. <laughs> I don't need that fresh avocado. Nobody <laughs> fresh avocado. <laughs> no, this is an Instagram thing. Uh, all right, <laughs> enough of that. I heard Brian laugh. <laughs> intern Brian in the background is laughing. The more the more the intern Brian drinks along with us. Like right. normally when he's in here, he's like quiet and then only says something when he's like here to fact check. Right. But the more that he drinks along with us, he just forgets that he doesn't have a mic in front of him and he's like and he's to... got all these saying all these funny things over here, but you can't you can't hear it. Maybe we should have handed him a mic. We should have. <laughs> Deb, you're out. Brian, you're in. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, team. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call it in hockey a line shift line change, line change yeah. <laughs> listen to uh, <laughs> you hear him say line change <laughs> fact. <laughs> fact. <laughs> poor, the poor people listening just at home are like who's the fucking idiot in the background yelling like, <laughs> it's fine it's fine logic <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding so in some good news with all this goddamn inflation going on, Anderson Valley Brewing vows not to increase prices for at least six months. And apparently this was a shot at Constellation, but they said, we actually like our customers. Wow. wow. We like you. Yeah. We like wow. you. Wow. Tired. Yeah. Thanks, Anderson Valley. Uh, good news for Flex. Not really. Boston Beer to launch cannabis-infused iced tea line. They're calling it Teapot. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, and that's Come cute on. because that, Boston, that's super good. Boston Tea Party. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I love mm-hmm. it. Tea Party. Tea Party. <laughs> I, I can cheers to the creativity I'm here for the there. Tea Party. So this was sent to me by Scott, who might be making his return to the show sooner than later. This is the best old school beers from the 80s and 90s that you can still drink today. And I read through the list and realized I've had all but one. <laughs> No, I don't know. So what with is you. it like? Like Mickey's <laughs> Miller Lite, High Life, MGD, Budweiser. No, it's, it's, it's slightly better than that. It's <laughs> slightly better. Like number one is Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I great mean, beer. Yeah, still solid. Been around since 1980. That is a great beer. Yeah, it's just you can't go wrong with that. Uh, number two, Red Hook ESB. Number three, Bell's Best Brown Ale. It's from 1988. Number four, Widmer Brothers Hef. Man, I tell you, my early craft days, I had a lot of Widmer Brothers Hef. Even went to the brewery. Is Franz a scanner on here? We'll find out. Number five, Brooklyn Lager. I definitely had that one when I was in New York a lot. Uh, number six, Victory Prima Pills, 1996. Had that one. This is the only one I don't think I've had. Full Sail Amber from 1989. Full Sail Brewing. I've had that one. Have you? Yeah. I mean, I've. I'm sure at some point. You've I, probably had it and just don't remember right. it. Yeah. Is it just a, your typical amber? Nothing? Yeah. I mean, it's like nondescript. Like, yeah. Yeah. Insert amber beer here. Uh, number eight, Sam Adams Baston Lager. First beer I had when I was 21, Sam Adams Boston Lager. Really? Yep. First legal beer I ever bought. I was going to say, we went to the Sam Adams Brewery in Boston. Uh, number nine, Deschutes Mirror Pond Pale Ale, everybody. Number 10, Allagash White from 1995, and that is the list. Nothing really to get mad at there. I mean, not all of it's craft anymore, but... Uh, no, I'm all not of them mad are, like, about it. Fine. Yeah, all of them know? are fine. Nothing bad. I mean, uh, Sierra Nevada still a fucking solid That's ass beer. That's the best one on the list, I think. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, good stuff. And as we often do, let's end this show in Florida. This is <laughs> Florida Woman. Yeah, hi, Vanessa. <laughs> Hi, Vanessa. Florida mother gets too drunk at the T-Rex Cafe, which, just saying the T-Rex Cafe made me giggle. That's a place? It's a place in <laughs> Disney Springs, gets hospitalized, and abandons her child. First of all, not laughing at the child abandonment. That is uh, wrong. You have a problem. Seek help. But uh, child, you might want a different parent. A child waited alone at a Disney Springs restaurant, the T-Rex Cafe to be exact, because I like saying it, uh, <laughs> restaurant bar last month. After his mother got drunk and abandoned her child, restaurant employees became concerned about the child and con- and contacted law enforcement, who tracked down his missing mother. She was so intoxicated that she had been taken to a nearby hospital, according to a new sheriff's report. Turns out, she twice told the wait staff that she needed to go to her car to get her credit card, and that she was leaving her son there. 
The first time, she came back after 10 minutes. The second time, she did not. Staff found her fanny pack with receipts inside for multiple double Grey Goose drinks. (laughs) The mother, Rosanna Nancy Mizerina Meza, she's got four names, 42 of Clearwater, was arrested for child neglect. Good. Uh, Yeah, so apparently she was running out to get her credit card. From her fanny pack. (laughs) (laughs) But instead was was pounding double Grey Goose drinks. That's crazy. I also love that they specified the type of vodka it was. It's like, this bitch is an expensive drunk. Right. It's not like she was drinking, like, pop yeah. yeah. the, the receipt stated, I'm sure the receipt stated it was Grey Goose. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. That was probably uh, probably right on the receipt. So thank you to Florida for being Florida. And I know we said this a couple of weeks ago, but thank you to Vanessa for being the light that is the darkness in Florida. Yeah, she's just so awesome, though. She is. And she would never abandon her kids at the T-Rex Cafe. <laughs> oh, T-Rex Cafe. That's that's my new favorite. I don't want to go. Sounds like a, the happening place. They got uh, double Grey Goose. Grey so. Goose, baby. Yeah, you're good there. All right. That is everything for us. I'm going to hit some music. I'm going to say, don't forget to go follow her buddy. Flex me beer underscores in between. Deb on the gram at one hop. H-O-P. Mess. All one word. We are Craft Beer Republic. I tell you to go follow intern Brian, but he deleted his gram. <laughs> <laughs> he apologized. Uh, 805-538-BEER, craftbeerrepublic.com, and even mail at craftbeerrepublic.com if you want to send us an old-fashioned email. I believe that is everything. I hope everyone is staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.